We're heading to a 50% obesity rate in the United States of adults by 2030. So then like what is detox is like, well, it's removing non-self from self. So say someone is like very scattered and having a hard time sleeping and seems to be having more accidents or injuries or like just bumping into things. And it's just really having a hard time managing just life in the modern world. Hey everyone, it's Kate Stillman with the Thrive with Kate podcast, formerly Yoga Healer podcast. And I'm here, I'm here with Gabby, who's been working with me for oh, quite a few months now, almost half a year. And we decided to do a podcast on a bit on like how I guide a detox. We're also going to do a free workshop on how I guide a weight loss challenge that we've just scheduled for mid-September. So if you're in our school, skool.com, if you're in Club Thrive Waitlist, you can get into these for free and add them to your calendar. Uh, and you'll just learn a lot. It's, but, you know, as a wellness pro, it's really important to know how to guide a detox and how to guide a weight loss challenge. We're heading to a 50% obesity rate in the United States of adults by 2030. Um, and as wellness pros, we might not want to work with weight loss. We might not want to work with detox, but the fact of the matter is if you're going to guide towards wellness, um, you should know how to detox someone and you should know how to help someone lose weight. So th that's where we're going to start the conversation, Kathy, is with some strong convictions. Yeah. Yeah, I love those convictions, Kate. And I guess to start off with, for the new listeners out there, uh, let's do some introduction and background on your uh, journey in the wellness industry, as well as how did you start with guiding detoxes? Yeah, I mean, the year was 2002, and I had recently moved back from San Francisco uh, where I had been in school for yoga at the Iyengar Yoga Institute, and I was become a, a practitioner of Ayurvedic medicine at California College of Ayurveda. So it, I was in California for a few years, you know, studying and seeing clients and interning and working at both of both the both of the colleges and learning, 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 learning. And then I moved. I decided to move back to Idaho. For a number of reasons, um, one of which was to ski uh, a lot and lifestyle business and really like start start where I wanted to grow. Uh, my family was there. I had moved my parents out from the East Coast to Idaho uh, before I'd left for, for California for schools. So I moved back to Idaho and I realized in the spring that I needed to detox because I had already had that habit of detoxing from Ayurveda college. And so I knew I needed to do a spring cleanse and it's hard to do a cleanse by yourself. It's a lot easier if you feel like you're part of a group doing something so that you don't back out when it gets hard or when the other people around you aren't doing something. The other thing was I needed to make money. Like I had a mortgage for the first time in my life and it was the off season, which at that time, and it's not true now, but at that time it was a very seasonal community where people would vacation in, in the summer and winter and that drove a lot of the economy. And then people would leave in the spring and the autumn, but I still needed to make money. So I thought, well, I need to launch something and I need to detox. So I might as well launch my first detox. I love that story and how you started on detoxing. And you went a bit about a uh, communal activity, right? That detoxes should be done in a group. My question there for you is, um, should there be a minimum number of the communal people or could it be, is to a group? Is that considered a group? That in, you know, in, in Wellness Pro Academy, that's considered more of like a VIP experience where you as the wellness pro are guiding someone one on one. And we can get we can get into that and into pricing. And uh, for me, in getting to a place where I could grow my online business, I needed uh, I did need in many ways I needed to like earn quite a bit of money so that I had enough time to grow yogahealer.com back in the day. And so I did a lot of like very high priced one-on-one -on -one detoxes with, with clients. 
as far as like a, a group and, and guiding a detox in a, in a group, and this is such a good differentiation, and we do this in Wellness Pro Academy where it's like you have you may have your VIP offer and then you have your general club offer, and it's helpful for wellness pros to think about separating those those two things out. Everyone in VIP, we encourage in Wellness Pro Academy, everyone in VIP should have access to the general club, and that strengthens the overall business for the wellness pros, but also the results of, of both members, of both groups of members, both the VIP members and, and your general club members. So when I was leading yoga health coaching, which we may be bringing back, um, we would, we would basically tell people five, like you need five members to have a dynamic group. So five members plus a leader is, and it's like a good minimum. It's a good baseline because if we get to four members, four members and a leader and say one of those or two of those members drop out, it starts to get a little too small. It starts to feel a little bit like there's not enough momentum. So I'd say five. Okay. So thanks for differentiating that. I didn't realize that just two would be more of like a VIP experience. And um, I guess for those new to the concept, can you explain what a detox is and the primary benefits? Like what's the difference of a detox besides from what are the other wellness offers they have? Yeah, this is, I mean, this seems like such in many ways, like it's such a simple question. Uh, you know, if you take that question to Google, depending on the year, uh, you know, pre-COVID versus post-COVID Google, like you might find out that like, it's just on, uh, you know, quack, quackery, this whole concept of detoxing the body. My background is in Eastern medicine. So it's, I'm not coming from an allopathic uh, pharmacology background with detox. And I think that's an important distinction. And, and and we do work with quite a few doctors in Wellness Pro Academy who do come from that background or uh, nurses or nurse practitioners or physical therapists, uh, people more from the disease diagnosis perspective. In Eastern medicine, we do diagnose disease, but in the pathogenesis is, is a pathway uh, back to health. And that's a, a really big distinction between Eastern medicine and, and allopathic or Western medicine. So in Eastern medicine, the concept of anything that blocks the physiology from efficiency is considered something that shouldn't be there. So the word for toxin in Ayurveda is different. This is another like for the Ayurvedic practitioners and the holistic practitioners listening, this might be like an aha moment. The words are different for toxin and for waste. So waste is functional in Eastern medicine. So like your pee is functional. It's a mala. Your feces is functional. It's a mala. Your menses is functional. It's a mala. Your sweat is even functional. It's a mala. But toxin is not functional, and it's not a mala. It's called ama. So it's something that's in the body that shouldn't be in the body, and it's disrupting the intelligence of the overall organism. So then, like, what is detox? Is like, well, it's removing non-self from self. To me, that's like the easiest way of thinking of, about it. It's like there's stuff in the cell. So if we look at it by a tissue by tissue basis, we could say there's excess triglycerides in the blood, or there's endocrine disrupting chemicals in the fat cells, right? We could look at it at, at, at that way. In Eastern medicine, we look at things a little bit differently. We might say that there's even an excess force in the body. So say someone uh, is having a hard time it's like very scattered and having a hard time sleeping and seems to be having more accidents or injuries or like just bumping into things. And it's just really having a hard time managing just life in the modern world. And, and they're very, you know, just like nervous and, and, you know, just that this fear based mentality, uh, not enoughness, just kind of grasping and, and looking for groundedness. Like if we look at that person with detox, we might even say that they're going to detox wind. 
from the body. And again, anyone from like an allopathic mindset, like this doesn't make any sense. Uh, but we could think of it as there's a force within them that, and we could, we could call it nerves. You know, we could say like their nervous system is really triggered. Uh, that is driving behaviors that are not actually who the person is when they're grounded. So then we might detox just to like, like move that excess wind out of the physiology and restore more of the grounding elements of earth and water so that the person can just honestly, so that they can exhale. And when they do, they often reverse reverse diaphragmatic breathing so when you have reverse diaphragmatic breathing it means you really can't get that full like exhale and you're often constipated and you're often like people will even lose their menstrual cycle because the downward flow of the wind isn't happening the downward movement we call movement wind in ayurveda isn't happening so just removing that excess force from the body which we have words for in eastern medicine we just don't have them in english so that word force is, is called dosha in Ayurveda. So we might detox to remove the ama, the toxin, which can have a physical a physicality. And then we also write, might detox to remove excess forces from the body, whether that's heat intensity or wind or excess coagulation, which might be like water or earth. Right. Yeah. And you, you mentioned some of the, um, fear based anxiety. And I guess that also streams from having, you know, the unhealthy lifestyle and having these bloatings and indigestions. And there is some misconception about detoxes. Um, people are shying away from it. They hear detox. They're like, I don't want to do that. That's maybe blue stuff. Does that even really work? So. For you, what are some common misconceptions that people have about detoxes and what yeah. would you say about those? Yeah, I mean, and I'm really thinking of the wellness pros out there who maybe have never let a detox uh, or maybe tried and not like no one signed up, right? Or maybe launched and a few people signed up and then people didn't really cross the finish line. Like, because a lot of things can happen and I've led over... I mean, we say over 50 detoxes, and that's definitely an underestimate, <laughs> but a lot uh, over the last 22, 23 years. So I've seen it all, and I've been in all of these really awkward situations that any of you might find yourself in. So I do speak with a, you know, a great deal of experience and a great deal of humility uh, as well from like, gosh, when you're in that place where you feel like you've had a lot of benefit as a wellness pro from detoxing and you're in that place where you feel like you're like trying to convince others and that you don't want to have to convince them because you know it works and yet you find yourself in what are their misconceptions about so i would say drum roll the number one misconception is probably that it's too hard or that they need more time so it'll feel too hard because they don't have enough time and they're already stressed and this is adding one more thing and the way that I think about it is a typical modern person who's not grounded or not in sync or not in flow or not what we might say in circadian rhythm, right? If we wanted to get technical about it, we'd say that their circadian rhythm is, is off, which might mean that their microbiome that sets the circadian rhythm is not diverse, which might mean that they're in dysbiosis, that they are bloated and they do have indigestion and they might be carrying an extra 15, 20 pounds and they might not sleep continuously, you know, for a good night's sleep. Uh, like they have all these issues, right? And so they have all of these props and I think of them like, like crutches. And so the crutches might be sugar, the crutches might be caffeine, the crutches might be winding down with, a glass of wine and watching Netflix, right? There's all these crutches. And what you're saying to them is like, I'm going to take away all of your crutches. And they're saying, well, I'm not going to do that because that's the only thing that's propping me up. Right. Yeah. So the misconception may be, well, and it might be fair because you might not, like you could take away all their crutches and they could, really go into a healing crisis or they could go into 
a family crisis or a work crisis or just a, an emotional crisis, which is a healing crisis. Like they could really be like, oh, shoot. Part of the reason I have these crutches is I don't like my job or I don't like my marriage mm-hmm. or I'm not a good parent. Right. But these crutches are keeping every, like the Netflix and the wine and the caffeine and the distraction. It's all keeping everything. It's all working together right now. And it's creating an ego. It's creating an identity, which is just what an ego is. It's a construct of habits and beliefs. So it's creating all that. And you're saying like, I'm going to take that away. Pay me money. I want to take that away from you. I know how. I'll guide you to it. I'll guide you right through it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's just a nice way of putting it. I like how you use crutches and taking that out. That's a new way of um, looking to it instead of just thinking it's a bunch of fear, anxiety. How do I help them through it? So I love that ideation of how you put that. And, you know, you having led so many detoxes, maybe more than 50, I'm pretty sure you've had a lot of experiences and maybe horror stories so why don't you share some of that like what's the most challenging or surprising situations from your past Uh, oh surprising situations this is a good one so i'm remembering back to when i was doing in-person detoxes and yoga studios so this one was in jackson hole and there was a, a lovely beautiful woman who actually ran a very successful um, online online streaming yoga business like 15 years ago. So so she was way ahead of the curve and she was just vivacious and vibrant. And I was teaching at this studio, this detox at this studio that she was affiliated with. And so she showed up and I was really psyched to have her there. And I, at, at the time was attracting a lot of yoga teachers and a lot of healers into detoxes. And that's what we might find actually as wellness pros is we might want to work with people that uh, are very much, you know, in that crutch situation. Um, and they might not respond to the term detox, but that doesn't mean you can't guide a detox. It's just, we might change some of the words. We might call it a reset or a challenge or a makeover. And we might like what we're in our detox certification at wellness pro Academy. I'm like super clear in the onboarding process of that, that like many of the people that you work with might really just need a habit reset before you can do a deeper detox with them and how to start out with beginner groups like that, that might really not have the time and really not have the bandwidth for uh, what some of us might just love to do as wellness pros in our own personal detoxes. So in any case, I'm guiding this detox. There's maybe 30 people in the detox and there's a lot of people with a lot of experience. And so we're doing a pretty deep detox or your Vedic type of detox. And uh, it's we're like a good weekend to the process. And she messages me and she's like, I'm at the bar drinking beer, eating a hamburger. I'm dropping out. (laughs) And that was just such a surprise to me because of who, you know, who I thought she was. And I think my training was very strict in Ayurveda and yoga, both in the United States and in India. And so I had already gone through so many phases of, of detox where you're developing a lot of, uh, I don't want to use willpower, but you, there's a phase in detox, uh, in fasting, any type of fasting where you, you know, it's challenging because you're going from digesting experiences and digesting food that's exogenous or taken in from outside of the body to digesting material from within the physiology and experiences from within the physiology. And so it's like a very much a going into the cave. And once you're in the cave, you're usually like most people are pretty happy once they're in the cave, if they don't have to go back into the outside world, if they can just do the cave thing for a while and really be in the detox. And in Ayurvedic medicine, uh, the process of pancha karma, pancha means five, karma means action. It's very much a process of receiving a lot of body work and receiving a lot of oil therapies that that drive you away from the outer world into the cave so that your body goes into autophagy and apoptosis that you're actually digesting your upcycling 
your own physiology, including your past memories and traumas, and releasing from the process of digestion. But if you're trying to navigate like the three kids and you're used to the glass of wine and you're used to the caffeine and like we're taking those things out, it's easy to uh, realize that like you have no business being in the cave right now. Right, right. Um, and I hear that. And it it is a challenging, a challenging experience, especially for those with kids. And, you know, how do you balance um, going to a detox where you don't eat much? And then you have to cook like these cheeseburgers for your kids, for example, or they want pizza, you know, it can be a tough time. Um, yeah. So how do you handle those um, participants who are having a, ho- a hard time during the yeah. detox? Such a good question, you know, and I, and again, I'm just going to kind of go back to like humility. Um, and, and it, one thing that I wish I had learned earlier was around you know, just the compassion and and empathy of like, what can someone really do based on where they're starting? And like, what's really going to be my role as the guide so that they have a positive experience and want to make this into a habit. So in coaching within the Body Thrive community for, which was based on my first book on, on up-level your body and your life with the 10 habits of Ayurveda and yoga. And I led Body Thrive from 2013 until 2022 when we trans we transmuted into club thrive and have continued to lead the members uh annually twice a year through detox and now twice a year through fast mimicking diet which we'll get more into when we do the how how to guide a weight loss challenge what i have found is that the habit like embedding the idea of that detox is it's a it's a habit and it's a skill. In Ayurveda, it's called Ritu Charya. So Ritu means seasonal Charya is the wheel. So Dina Charya is the daily reel. That's like our daily habit cycle, our circadian daily r- rhythm habit cycle. Ritu Charya is our seasonal habit cycle. And Ayurveda is very clear in the ancient text that you have this incredible opportunity a few times a year when the weather changes. And when the weather changes, you can release the excess forces and you can release any buildup of toxins or that ama. So like you you have the wind behind your back, which I, I'm on the lake right now. And uh, when you're paddling like up upwind, it's so hard. Like you often just feel like you're exerting all this effort and you're not going anywhere. And when you're paddling with the wind at your back, you just feel like, oh, I'm so amazing. I'm so fast. I'm so in shape. Look at me go. And so that Ritu Charya is saying, like, just paddle with the wind at your back. Like, detox when the seasons are changing, when changes in the air. So when we do that and when we teach that, that, hey, we're like, this isn't something that's just going to come and go me leading a detox. Like, this is something that I'm going to, I'm going to teach you how to do consistently, just like any yoga teacher isn't just going to teach one class now and then, but they're going to continually guide their members in the habit. They're going to develop a habit of yoga. And when we develop a habit of yoga or a habit of meditation or a habit of cooking for ourselves at home or a habit of going to bed early or a habit of seasonal detox, what happens is we get good at that habit. And the better we get at that habit, the more we're able to unlock new levels of consciousness, which is why the yogis are into detox. And we're also able to unlock higher levels of being pain-free while aging. Right, so changing how we age. I think a lot of people, including myself, use it to do a weight reset, to like really to just recalibrate. So like you can let things get out of hand because you know you've got your next detox on the schedule. You can enjoy that, you know, free food on the vacation. Just yeah. make sure you detox. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, really, like I can't, like, I'm not even as strict with like intermittent fasting rhythm. Now that we, you know, four times a year have these detoxes and fast mimicking diet and club thrive. And, you know, the other, um, I do want to talk a little bit about, you know, horror stories, healing crises. Um, like the horror story only happens when you don't know what to do. 
So for me, like there was one time early on, I didn't know what to do. Like I had someone that just was having like insane heat rashes. So there's all this heat coming out um, of his body. And I was like, I mean, I kind of knew what to do in terms of textbook, but I didn't know, I didn't have the experience of guiding someone in that situation. And so we might be textbook smart, which is great. It's super helpful. Thank gosh I was textbook smart because I had a ton of recommendations that worked. But I was freaked out because I was like, I hope that works. So I hope, you know, putting a ton of aloe vera juice in their system, you know, and cilantro juice and cucumber juice and getting them off the hot sauce. And, you know, like, I hope this really works and having them take cold showers and find a cold lake to bathe in. And like, I hope this works because like, otherwise it is really scary when you have told someone to do something and they have a healing crisis where their body's dumping more toxins. And all that usually is, is the body's dumping more than the person can digest in real time or exude. And often there's channels that are blocked. So if there's, uh, say the liver is overloaded, say the gallbladder is overloaded with biliary stones and the liver's overloaded with biliary stones and there's um, a lot of endocrine disrupting chemicals in the fat cells and the person's constipated um, and they're dehydrated, like deeply dehydrated at the level of, I, I don't know, it's kind of easier to just describe the experience uh, where you just feel like you're not, your tissue's not soft. It usually goes with aging where like the, the muscle tissue gets really rigid almost like tendons and ligaments. So like that level of dehydration, it's like the, you start dumping toxins out of the organs and, you know, whether the fat tissue is an organ, the liver is an organ and the body is just like, I, there's nowhere for it to go. So then it starts coming out through like the skin or. So, you know, in wellness pro Academy, the detox certification, like we talk a lot about how to look at what's going on um, and start to improve our skill set with that and be able to to make recommendations but we also help you do things like not have someone go into a deep healing crisis if possible <laughs>